Hello folks, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add Nintendo 64 games, uh, and this trick will probably work for other emulators too, uh, but in this case Nintendo 64 games um, that will actually work in your Steam Big Picture mode, and you can play them with your controller, the same controller you use to browse around the uh, Steam interface. Uh, so first things first, we need to get an emulator, and then we'll be working on adding that to the Steam list. If you're not familiar with uh, emulators, uh, suffice to say those are essentially the game system in code form. Uh, so in this case we're downloading one called uh, Project 64, which I believe is pj64-emu.com. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, what this does is it'll let you launch Nintendo 64 ROMs as they're called. Um, let's see, they basically they have a beta of uh, Project 64 1.7 which has been in beta for I think like two years now so I don't think it's ever actually going to come out but anyway 1.6 is the only one you can download unless you've donated and 1.7 is apparently buggy anyway so uh, but here's project one uh, project 64 version 1.6 just want to click on that and then you just click download that'll download the installer there's really nothing special to it except for you can tell it where to install um, Mine, I'm actually just going to cancel because I don't need it. Well, I finished Twitter. Um, I'll go ahead and lead you through the installation as far as I can without actually reinstalling it because I currently have it installed. Okay, mine's just immediately saying modify, repair, remove. So, uh, suffice to say, it's your standard installer. Just go through it and install. Okay, now I'm not, I'm also not going to show you where to get ROMs, uh, but. Uh, ROMs are the actual game files. It is illegal to distribute these. Um, many people say it's not illegal if you own the original copy. Typically, that's at least somewhat true. I mean, nobody's realistically nobody's gonna throw you in jail for downloading NES games or Nintendo 64 games. But it is technically illegal unless you own all these games. Thankfully, I actually do own all of these games, physical copy. Um, so that's cool. Uh, Okay, now, once you have a ROM, first off, uh, if you're in the USA, uh, typically when you get a ROM, you want to look for one that has a U and an exclamation point in it. The U means USA version. Uh, you can see this one's JU. That means it's a J Japan and USA version. Um, and then the exclamation point just means that it's a confirmed good dump of the game, uh, meaning that there won't be any weird bugs or problems with the, uh, the copy. Um, you can see down here I've got a multiplayer version of Super Mario 64. There's a uh, interesting mod that someone made for that, which I'm not going to get into on this either. Uh, but then I also have this file here, which is the uh, Project 64 uh, banner, which we'll be using in Steam. Uh, I'll link to this file as well. Someone posted it on one of the Steam forums, so credit to them. But yeah, so okay, once you've got your ROMs, basically what you want to do. Um, you need to first know where you have Project 64 installed, and then you need to know what folder all of your ROM files are in. Uh, for me, I've got the uh, the actual uh, emulator in my program files, Project 64, uh, and then there's an EXE there. And then for my ROM files are on my M drive, uh, video game ROMs in 64. Uh, but let's just say we want to add Super Mario 64 to our list. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on Super Mario 64 while holding down the shift key. That'll give me a special option, copy as path. If you just do a regular right click, that won't be there. So remember, hold down shift, right click, and then you can copy the path to that ROM. Okay, now in Steam, uh, if you've watched my adding Minecraft to Steam video, you'll sort of get the gist of what we're doing here. Essentially, we're going to add the, uh, the e this exe file as a game, and we're going to throw a little bit of command at the end to tell it which game we want to launch. Uh, so we want to do add a non-Steam game, and I'm just going to hit browse, go ahead and go to my uh, my computer where I've got all this stuff at. So I'm going to go to my C drive, uh, and then uh, oops. program files x86, uh, since I'm on a 64-bit machine. Uh, if you're on 32-bit, you just won't have the x86 at the end. Okay, and we're going to find Project 64 1.6. Just select that exe file and hit open. Project 64.exe. Open. Okay, and it'll show up in this list and it's checkmarked. And you just do add selected programs. Now, what is odd is uh, 
since all of the different games are using the same EXE, um, Steam will see them all as the same game. Uh, so if you take screenshots in them, uh, they'll all be kind of lumped together. And as far as I know, the only way around that is to either make like a uh, a separate folder with a copy of the emulator in it for every single game, and then choose that copy of the emulator per game. Uh, that would keep it separate, but of course you're going to have a ton of copies of the emulator itself, and you'll have to reset up your settings for every single game, which can be annoying, but I imagine it would have a little better user experience in the end. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to let it go ahead and think that they're all the same game with different names. Um, okay, so we, we added that, and you can see we should have... We have Nintendo 64, which I had added. That was my old link. Uh, that's just launching the emulator itself. But here is the one that we just added, so we can ignore this one up here. Okay, and you can see, since I took screenshots in the, the other version, it's seeing that this is the same program and all those screenshots are still showing up here, but that's not a big problem. Okay, now I want this to say Mario 64, and I want to point it to that game. So I'm going to right-click on the game, choose Properties, and I will choose Super... Oops. I think I accidentally hit Enter on that. Properties... Oh God, why can I not select... Okay, Super Mario 64. Alright, now Project 64 is a little weird in that when you give it the path to the uh, the game, it actually doesn't want it in quotes. So you can see the, the path to Project 64 is already in here. And we just want to have a space after that. And then you want to paste in that path that we just copied. And again, to get that, it was just shift right click on the file, copy as path. But the thing is, Project 64 doesn't want quotes around it, and if you launch it right now, it'll complain that it can't find the ROM file, so you actually need to delete uh, the quote at the beginning and the end of the uh, the path to the ROM. So you should have um, the path to project64.exe in quotes, a space, and then the path to your game without quotes, even if it's got spaces in it and weird characters. Project 64 handles it regardless. Okay, so we can now... Uh, hit enter on that, and you can see now it says Super Mario 64, and if I hit play, it should launch the game. It's me, Mario! Oh. Hello! <laughs> yeah, and one of my friends is gawking at the fact that I'm playing at 64 on Steam. Uh, so you can see the, the Steam community does work in here. If I hit Shift Tab, uh, it works perfectly, uh, so that's awesome. Um, now, the only reason I'm not playing this full screen is because uh, Fraps, the screen recorder I'm using to record this, for some reason stops whenever a full screen Nintendo 64 game launches. But, uh, it does actually work, and to show you where that setting is to make it automatically go full screen, that is under Options, Settings. And then you go under the Options tab here and choose On Loading a ROM Go to Full Screen. Just checkbox that and hit OK. And then the next time you launch a game from one of these shortcuts in Steam, it'll automatically go full screen. Uh, and that's how I usually do it, but just for this demo, I had to not go full screen. Uh, okay, so to go over some of the settings in Project 64, first off, since I said we're going to make this work with Big Picture, we, we're going to have to set up your controller. I'm not going to go into getting your controller to work in the first place. That's out of the scope of this. Uh, suffice to say, I have an Xbox 360 controller hooked up to the Xbox 360 wireless receiver, which is hooked up via USB to my computer. Windows automatically sees it, installs all the drivers, so that's not a problem. Uh, but what you will have to do, uh, I went to Options, Settings, and first off, I had to change my input controller to this Enrage one. Uh, for some reason, that's the only one that wanted to accept the input. I think that's uncommon. It should actually work with the other one, but whatever. Um, this one has a few more settings anyway. Uh, once you do that, you'll it'll ask you to restart and everything. And actually, I'm going to end this emulation so that you can hear me better. Um, okay, now the next thing we need to do, once you've switched it to that plugin, you need to go to Configure Controller Plugin. And, uh, okay, so here we here we have all the settings for this controller plugin. Uh, you can see you have a different setup for every single controller, and uh, I have two controllers uh, set up currently. They both work perfectly. I think you can get up to four controllers on this wireless receiver. Uh, they're all just Xbox 360 controllers. 
Okay, but in here, all you're going to have to do is just go through the, the settings here. Um, by default, it's not going to know that you have a controller you want to use, so you'll have to go to the Devices tab here on your first controller and do a Gamepad Device and choose... Oh, <laughs> mine's actually not hooked up right now, so Project 64 has no idea. And it's not going to until I restart it, so let me save and just relaunch this shortcut. And actually, now it's going to go full screen. Fark. Oh, good. It didn't. Okay. I thought I had uh, checked that option. Okay, so let's just in the emulation here. All right. Now my controller is actually hooked up to the receiver. That's the one thing to remember is if your controller isn't on when you launch this, it will have no idea that you have a controller even when you turn it on. So um, that obviously won't matter if you're launching it from big picture because you'll probably already be using it. Okay, there we go. So in Project 64, uh, again, we went to Options, Controller Plugin. Okay, and under the device tab, under controller 1, we have Xbox 360 wireless receiver. Uh, for the second controller, if I had it plugged in, there would just be two of them listed there, the bottom one. They, they are in order of uh, what they show on the controller itself. So, Okay, so how you set up the actual controls. You just click on that button, and then you push the button on your gamepad that you want to do whatever that is. So this is for the digital pad, so I'm controlling the D-pad on my controller with this left right, down. And now for start, I'm doing the button to the right of the home button. A, I'm doing as A. B, I'm actually doing as X because that feels better. Uh, it feels more like an N64 controller. For the L trigger, I'm going to do the top left button. Uh, right trigger, I'll do the bottom right trigger. And Z trigger, I'm going to do the bottom left trigger. That feels the most like a uh, Nintendo 64 thing for me. Uh, for the C buttons, we're just going to have to make do with the uh, the second analog stick. So I'll go ahead and do up, left, right, and down. And then lastly, for the regular analog stick, you do the same thing. Up, left, right, and down. Okay. Uh, now right here it has uh, stick range. You can adjust this if it feels like your, control, uh, your regular joystick isn't working too well. And that will be good. Okay, so this should now work uh, with our controller. So if I go ahead and launch Mario 64 here, let's find out. It's me, Mario. Okay, so I'm just going to control this with my controller here. Hello. And you can see it works perfect. I'm controlling this and it feels very good. The, the controls feel almost just like playing it on a Nintendo 64. But it can look much, much better. Okay, now one other little trick I'll, sh I'll show you is uh, if you go under Configure Graphics Plugin and you go to the Advanced tab, which uh, will be hidden until you uncheck Hide Advanced Settings and hit Apply, close it out, and reopen it. It's annoying, I know, but uh, once you've done that, go to the Advanced tab, and it has a checkbox here, Adjust Game Aspect Ratio to match yours. Now, you can try this out. It does cause some bugs in some games, but for the most part, it works really well. It works great with... Uh, Ocarina of Time uh, and Mario 64, both of them handle it pretty well. Uh, the only thing I've noticed in Mario 64 is the areas that are outside of the 4 to 3 aspect ratio will sometimes have, uh, like the skybox will be sort of stretching or weird. And in Ocarina of Time, some uh, just the pre-rendered uh, backgrounds sometimes will be stretched. Uh, so that, that can be awkward, but try it out. Uh, it, it'll make the image not be stretched out on white screen. Um, but having this unchecked will make it more compatible with all games. So, okay, so we've done that. Um, again, I would probably make this full screen if I were you, but... Alright, so the next thing we want to do is uh, sort of customize this a little bit. I'm going to go to my grid view here and find Project 64. Um, actually, here, we're going to find Mario 64, which is somewhere... Oh, <laughs> it actually gave it the same, like I said, since this is the same EXE file technically for both of these shortcuts, it uh, it set the same um, the same image uh, for both of them. So we're going to try and change it separately. This I haven't actually tried. Now, right now it's working. I'm not sure if when I reload uh, Steam if the images can be separate. Basically what I'm saying is if you have tons of different games on here all of their own custom banners it might not work. Um, so that could be a problem. I'm gonna browse to just any other file that I have because I don't really have a picture for Super Mario 64 made yet. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab whatever the heck this thing is see if that works. Cool. And it did. Now 
Again, I have no idea if this will work uh, once I restart, so I'm actually going to try that out here. Okay, Steam is exited. Let's relaunch it. By the way, this dock on the top, because people always ask me whenever I'm uh, making a video, it's called Rocket Dock, and it's significantly better than uh, OS X's dock because you can put windows over it, and then when you mouse to the top, it'll pop to the top where you need it, and then it'll go right back under. That's not the default behavior, but you can set it up like that. Um, it has a lot more settings than the OS X dock. Anyway, just babbling while I'm waiting for this to launch. Okay, now let's see if it kept our, our pictures here. Okay, Project 64 is still the way it should be, but Mario 64 went back to default for some reason. Okay, so I'm not quite sure on that. You, you may have to do the trick, like I was saying, copy that whole Project 64 folder uh, of the emulator itself into multiple different folders, one for each game, uh, and add each of those EXEs separately um, instead of using the same emulator EXE for all of them. That's more of a limitation of Steam, uh, not so much a problem with the, the emulator itself. Anyway, so let's go ahead and check this out in big picture. Hopefully my video will keep recording. I had it die on me a few times. Okay, uh, so library, you can see we have Nintendo 64 here, uh, but to show you that the one we just made works, I'll go to view all games. I'll scroll over here until I hit uh, the S's. Uh, Super Mario 64, and you can see the, the icon's not working for whatever reason. Uh, one of the many reasons I went to just launching just the emulator. Uh, to do that, you just wouldn't have the ROM path at the end, and you would just rename it Nintendo 64. Okay. Now, again, if you had this set to go full screen, it works perfect. I've been using it on my TV. Um, you yeah, know, it's very seamless. And the controller works perfectly in here. You can just... Uh, Start running around and playing Nintendo 64 games. And in fact, the shortcut key will work. Oops. <laughs> if you take screenshots, um, you can share them and everything. You can bring up the Steam community. Now this is glitching out. I didn't have this problem when uh, when I was in uh, full screen mode. But you can see the game isn't paused automatically when you do this. So you'll you will want to pause before you actually open this up, or else you're going to be killing yourself a few times. Um, yeah, you can open up the web browser like you normally would, your friends list, everything works perfect. So, and you can see we have all my screenshots uh, as well. So, yeah. Now, the only, the last problem I've had is that uh, you can't close out the game using your controller at all. Um, so, I always just hit Alt F4 to close it out. Uh, that'd be the quickest, easiest way. There might be some way to set up, uh, yeah, and you can see it got the screenshots here. And for some reason, my controller just cut out. I don't think that's something to do with the setup here. I think that's a weird Steam bug. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, my controller will cut out. And it does that with actual Steam games, too, so I'm not sure. Um, I probably just need to update the drivers or something. Anyway, yeah, here's all your screenshots, and they work perfect. You can share them. Yeah, you know, you can... Uh, okay, apparently you can't. Whatever. Trust me, it does work. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's how you get a Nintendo 64 game in your Steam list and get it working with your controller uh, for use with big picture mode. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, and if you see I've messed anything up or it's just not working for you, you know, feel free to actually add me on Steam. I'll, I, uh, I can try and, add, uh, try and lead people through this. Uh, my username is the same on Steam as it is on YouTube. So... Uh, if you do add me, just put something like a message saying, hey, I'm from YouTube and I need help. <laughs> Otherwise, I might not add you guys. Um, yep. Anyway, so hopefully this has been helpful for you guys, and thank you much for watching.